Welcome to the Finer Femininity Catholic Women's Podcast, a podcast for Catholic women with traditional values, women who are striving for sanctity, learning to be more joyful and feminine in their vocations by studying Our Lady, the saints, and revered Catholic men and women. And now your host, mother of 11, grandmother of 26, Leanne Vanderputten. Hello, ladies. This is a short and simple little video on blouses and shortening blouse sleeves. I just want to encourage you today if you're having trouble finding something cool and modest for summer. When we're trying to stay modest in the summertime, we oftentimes have to layer our clothing. With seven daughters working to look nice and yet modest, we do do a lot of layering. Now, I'm from Canada where the summers are short and not too hot. So I find Kansas quite hot at times. Well, actually most of the summer. I can get used to a light layer, but I prefer not to. So I choose a simple, modest option, which is blouses, of course. When I am looking at blouses to purchase, I look at five things. First, I need to make sure that the blouse is not see-through. If it is, then on goes the tank top or shell underneath, and this is what I'm trying to avoid, that second layer. We are looking for cool clothing for the summer. In order to have a modest look, I don't want my undergarment showing through, so the material has to have some substance and can't be see-through. The second thing I have to look at are the sleeves. Sleeveless is out, of course, and we're to have more length than a cap sleeve. With this tutorial of shortening longer sleeves, you're able to choose the length of the sleeve and can make it more generous than your typical short sleeve blouse. Number three of what to look for in a modest blouse is the neckline. Buttons are great. If a button on my blouse is too close to the neck, and if the next one is too low, I use a safety pin so that I can pin it where it is not too low and not too high, and if I was to bend down, it would not gape. A good rule of thumb, and this is in the Catholic modesty rules, is two fingers below that indentation where your collarbone is. And that doesn't mean two fingers vertically. If I find that the blouse is a v-neck that I can't pin without it looking funny, I use these modesty panels that I got off Amazon. And as you can see, they have snaps in order to hold them in place under your blouse. Then you don't have to add an extra layer by wearing a shell or tank top underneath. I will leave a link for those in the details below. Number four is that I don't want a blouse that is too tight. If the buttons are pulling or there are tension lines across the bust area, it is too tight. It is also too form-fitting if the material doesn't flow beneath the chest area. That doesn't mean we have to go for baggy. A blouse can look nice and can be tailored without being too tight. And number five is, well, at least for me, they can't be too expensive. I don't know about you, but I don't like spending a bunch on my clothes. There's so many other things with small and large families and even as singles in this day and age that we want to spend our hard earned money on. So don't feel like you have to buy brand new. My girls all look lovely and have a nice wardrobe and all is bought from thrift or resale shops. So the five things are, number one, you don't want a blouse that is see-through. Number two, make sure the sleeves are long enough. Number three, the neckline should not be low. Number four, not too tight. And number five, inexpensive. We like to frequent our favorite coffee thrift shop. It's a coffee shop and a thrift shop together and shop for our modest options there. This year I kept my eyes open for nice, cool, wrinkle-free blouses. Sometimes they're hard to find, but I have found some nice ones. Like this orange gingham one. And then this nice polka dot one that I wear with my lacy black skirt. And yes, I wear this for every day. It's not a Sunday outfit. When shopping for blouses, a lot of times they don't fit the bill. But when I do find something, I'm quite pleased and I add it to my wardrobe. Oh, and one rule of thumb that I have read in the past is this. If your closet is full, then when you bring one item home to add to it, get rid of one thing so you can replace it. 
something you don't wear too often or doesn't fit quite right but you have just been holding on to. Give it back to the thrift shop. This is important so you can keep your closet in order. When I go shopping for a short sleeve blouse and can't seem to find anything on the rack in my size, I will saunter over to the long sleeve blouses and see if there are any choices there. If I find something I like, I don't let the longer sleeves deter me. As long as it fits nice and isn't see-through, I buy it and I bring it home and I take up the sleeves. What's really neat about this is that I don't have to settle for something that is a little shorter than I like, and I can make my own measurement on the sleeve. So today I'd like to show you a simple tutorial on how to take a long sleeve blouse and make it into a short sleeve one. So you can also build up your summer wardrobe with cool cotton blouses that are modest, fit well, and are a comfy pick for the summer. If you're a rookie and don't do much sewing, this tutorial is for you. It's been a while since I have done some serious sewing. In fact, I didn't even want to break out the sewing machine for this project, and so I sewed it by hand. To me, it was less hassle than threading my machine. As you can see from this picture, though, I did have my sewing days. The little outfits that the girls have with the matching hats I made a few years back. Such fun to go to church or other events having my girls matching with outfits I had made. Very rewarding indeed. As time went on, a couple of my daughters picked up the sewing and I let my skills get rusty. So, I take my blouse with the longer sleeves and lay it out on the table. Now I have to measure the sleeves. And I can do this by laying another blouse with a good sleeve length on top of it, making sure the shoulder and underarm seams line up, and then just mark the sleeves with a pencil on both sides. Or I can try on the blouse and mark the sleeves where I want it to be brought up. Next I take my ruler and make my pencil line across the sleeve. I need to leave room for a hem so I mark another line one inch below that first line. This is giving me enough room to work with as far as the hem goes, and that's where I cut it off. And then I do the same to the other sleeve. Next, I thread my needle. Then I turn my sleeve inside out and fold up that hem on the pencil line I have made. I pin it first, four pins in the sleeve, and then I sew it. Do this to both sleeves, iron the hems flat, and voila! you now have your short sleeve blouse. It's quite easy and it was fun this year to get a few more blouses in my wardrobe. I got rid of some of my layered looks that I kept avoiding in the hot summer to make room for my new blouses. Here are the blouses I adjusted this summer. My fashion show is definitely not spectacular, but you can see some of the nice blouses I was able to incorporate into my summer wardrobe for a cool and modest look and feel. Happy sewing and thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today. Please stop by the Finer Femininity website to enjoy articles on the single life, the married life, raising children, and the spiritual life, all written by solid Catholic authors. You can follow Finer Femininity on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. God bless you, and see you next episode.